So today I want to show you guys how to automatically make programs for multiple machines. So I'm going to show you our software called Part S and what's going to happen inside of there is I'm going to give a 3D uh, a part file, a few of them. We're going to put them in. We're going to say software please create automatically programs for me for my panel bender machine and my laser machine. After that we're going to step into the OPS realm where I'm going to take a, a CSV which is just an Excel file with a bill of materials, parts I want to do, quantities, what material to go on, and then I'm going to let it automatically make nesting for me. Um, so you can see how quick and how easy and how accurate we can make production for you. Okay, we are going to watch the screen and uh, let's have Matt take us through the first step right here. Okay, Matt. All right. So what you see on the screen here is called Part S. It's Salvinini's software solution to automatic programming, okay? Um, we're gonna go right into a batch elaboration process, which is the process that most customers are going to use on a daily basis. So I'm gonna go to my batch. When I go inside of my batch, I select the parts that I want to make into programs, okay? In this case, I'm gonna take these four 3D step files, okay. and I'm just gonna drag them in. Okay, and it populates the list of parts that I need to turn into programs, okay? Next thing I do is I click my elaboration button and it asks me what stream type do I want to make? So what production flow do I want to put these 3D parts through? You can select individual machines or you can select a production flow. And those and are the individual mach machines that are coded up there? Yes, sir. So we have a P4 machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have an S4 machine, a laser machine. We have a P2 machine mm -hmm. uh, when we have a press break. Okay. okay. And then over here on the right hand side, we have a production flow of a punching machine and a P4 machine. And then we have a laser machine and a P4 machine. Okay, so those are those uh, parts of those automated lines like you have in your showroom. Absolutely. Right here. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the laser and the panel bender. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to click next. Next thing it asks me is two simple questions. For my laser, what parameter set do I want to use? Okay. For my P4, what parameter set do I want to use? Okay. Are then, those do those come with the software, or you those reset are, those before? So those are uh, custom that you set up based upon your needs. So okay. uh, based upon your material types, your material thicknesses, oh, that right. sort okay. of stuff. And okay. that goes with the initial. Um, setting of the equipment. Yep. yep, so what happens is uh, when you get the software, you come in for training. During the training, we're gonna teach you everything you need to know about the software, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you take that information that you learned back to your, your shop, and you kind of put the two together. So like, for example, some customers might run material that is pre-painted, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to have a different parameter set versus a non-painted material. The customer has vinyl on top of their material versus no vinyl. Oh, right. Okay. Right? So there's some differences yep. that you have to set in the parameters, but it's nothing overly complicated. We make everything very easy to understand. Okay. okay? Good. Thanks. Next thing I do is I hit OK. So what you're going to see on the screen is this going to start multi-threading. What it's going to do first is it's going to take the original 3D or 2D file that I gave it. Mm -hmm. It's going to save it into the database. Okay. Okay. Second thing it's going to do is it's going to take that saved version. It's going to put it into our panel bender software. So when it goes into the panel bender software, it converts this 3D to a sheet metal part. So this is this is part of the control software. Mm -hmm. From the that's that's on the uh, you will panel bender itself. Yep, yeah. you will be able to see these these yeah. programs at the machine. Cool. Okay. So it's going to create the programs for the panel bender. It's going to then export a correctly developed 2D pattern for the laser machine. Okay. And it's going to hand that 2D pattern to the laser software. When the laser software is complete, is able to write and compile the programs for both machines. You're going to see it populate in the center. So at any time I can come inside of here and I can see information about this part. So it's going to tell me the part name. It's going to tell me for my panel bender it was complete and for my laser it's complete. That means it was able to generate a program. It was able to write the code of the program and compile, which compile means validate that it can be actually ran on the machine. Okay. okay. If everything is good, I'll have all green check marks so I can come up and I can save my check parts. Now, something I do want to tell you is that we made these four 
programs, right? But we made four programs for two different machines, so we'd actually made eight programs in about 52 seconds oh, from an okay. original 3D file. Okay. Okay. Yep. So this that, is that was something that was submitted to you from, for example, one of your clients wants this part made, and you take the CAD file, and that's what it's based on. Pass it through and see what happens. Gotcha. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. So at this part, now we're done with the, the single part programming level. Okay. I can go ahead and save those parts to my database for use later in nesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, next software I want to show you is OPS. All right. Mm -hmm. So now that we've made our single part programs, now we need to take those single parts and we need to make them into a nest. All okay. right. So to do that inside of OPS, which OPS means order processing system, I'm going to simply take a CSV file, an order, a bill of materials, okay. and I'm going to put it into the software. What's going to happen is it's going to explode that bill of materials line item by line item. It's gonna populate the part information. It's gonna give me my name of my part. It's gonna give me a quantity requested, so inside of that order, how many of this part I wanted to produce. It gives me a quantity nested, which at this point, we've not nested yet, right? We've just created what we want to nest. Yeah. My quantity produced. So since OPS is um, connected to Salvanini machines, it reads what happens on the machines. So as a part is being ran, that information is handed back to OPS and says, hey, this part that you gave me, I've now created one of those. So it's going to do an incremental um, index of the part until it goes to 100% complete. I'm getting the feeling this chases it all the way to shipping. Chases all the way through yeah. from the beginning to the end yeah. of the system. Okay. okay. And this gives a good um, gives a good idea to the programmer mm -hmm. or someone that just wants to see what's actually being ran on the machine, what's going on. You don't necessarily have to walk down to the machine to see what's going on at this point. You can see it here. Yeah, but okay. this would affect people who um, order materials, for example. Yeah. Like, hey, we don't, we're going to run out. We don't have 19, we have 18. Yeah. Absolutely, yep. 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 yep, okay, got it. So at this point, in my particular OPS installation, again, I said OPS is completely customized to what you need. Mm -hmm. What my OPS is going to do is it's going to nest based upon my material material type and thickness. So it's just going to grab all the parts that I have that are of the same material type and thickness, throw them in nesting together, decide what sheet size is the most efficient, going to write the code of the program, compile, which means it's going to validate, it can be, be ran, and then it's going to create a job out on the machine so someone can go out and simply start the production and run. Okay. So now all I have to do is I have to start my compilation. After a few seconds, you're going to see a window pop up and it's going to tell you what's happening. Right now, creating production. I'm creating the nest and my nest name is OPS Demo 20 Gauge Cold Rolled Steel. Okay? The naming of the nest can be customized to what you need. Some of our customers want to have the nest based upon their, uh, their kit, right? If it's a specific kit oh, number. Right. Okay. If it is a job shop, for example, they want to know that this particular um, production run is for General Motors parts or whatever it might be, okay? Gotcha. So they, we can make it easier for the operator of the machine to understand what he's running, right? So some parts look a lot alike, but if we can give them that, that uh, transparency to understand what they're actually running and where it's supposed to go, mm -hmm. that is extremely valuable to the shop floor. There's it, a lot of times parts get lost, right? Yes. So we have to be able to track that through the system and they have to have a, a very good understanding of what they're doing and why they're doing it, okay? Okay. So after just a minute or two, depends upon, of course, how many parts and yeah, the, the complex is. Yep. Yeah. Um, the nesting will be done here in a few seconds and it's okay. gonna show us a job at the bottom left-hand corner. Um, and we'll be able to select this particular job and there. see information about it. Okay. So now it says, my nesting is completed. So basically it took all of these parts that I had up here, it made them into a nest. Bottom left hand corner is a job. It creates a job, right? A job in Salvanini lingo yeah. is the same material type and thickness, but it could be one sheet or 500 sheets. I was going to ask, when it, when it was doing the uh, nesting, and you're going to need maybe four of those parts, but a hundred of those parts. Uh, it has to look at the job over many individual pieces of metal, 
correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So it'll say that the nest isn't just the nest for that one sheet. The nest includes all of these parts. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Gotcha. And you know, we can do we can do some things as far as if you want particular parts to be ran together. If you want extra parts, right? And so there yeah. is that possibility that a lot of customers run Kanban parts mm -hmm. that are parts that they can use to fill up extra sheet, right? Okay. Instead of wasting that material, we can throw extra parts onto that sheet mm -hmm. that they will use at some point in time down the road. Okay. Okay. So with OPS, that's 100% possible. It's just some extra fields that you have to tell us when you give us the order. Okay. Okay. So if I select the job, I'm going to see some information about it. So it tells me what machine I'm going to run it on. This particular one is for our Salvanini S4 machine in our showroom. It tells me my scrap percentage. This is my global scrap percentage. So out of all of the nests, mm -hmm. this is my overall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it gives me my name which yep. is that custom field that I can create. This is produce percentage. This will show me how much of this job I've actually ran on the machine. Mm -hmm. At this point, I've not sent the machine for production, so there's nothing produced. But as it's running, it's gonna show you, hey, I've done this much of this job, okay? It gives me an estimated time. So this is my estimated punching time, it gives me a remaining time. So as this is running on the, on the machine, my remaining time is going to change, obviously, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It tells me what my material is going to be. 20 gauge cold rolled steel, oh, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. Now, since I actually have the job highlighted on the right hand side, I have a programs tab. So I can come inside of here and I can select any one of these programs inside of this job and I can say, see the layout. Okay? If you want to see a larger one. That's one yeah, that's one of the nest. Yeah, that's you can, one of the sheets rather. Yep, and yeah. you can double click. Okay, that's going to show you a nice about. preview. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's say that this green part, I don't know what this green part is. Mm -hmm. um, on the left hand side, you can go through here and you can select any one of these parts and oh. it's going to highlight, mm -hmm. right? So this is part number 8059-3104 and it filters it out at the very top so I can see a different preview. I can go to the next part, this yellow part now, okay. it's highlighted. Mm -hmm. This is this part, this 3204. Here's this part. Wow, all right. So I can see very easily what part is on what nest. So you can you can take a sheet and it will show you all the parts on that sheet and you can yes. go from there. That yeah. way you 100% know okay. what you're running. And even the, even if the sheet's different, doesn't matter. It doesn't it'll, matter. It'll, it'll give it to you by sheet. Yep. Okay. Okay. So OPS also automatically created a report for us. Oh, okay. Okay. So the very first page is a job summary page. We can obviously customize this on what is needed and what's not. Mm -hmm. We can create a data matrix code, a QR code, a barcode, something that the operator of the machine, if you want to, you can walk out, hand them this, this uh, PDF. They can simply scan it mm -hmm. and then start running that production run. Here it tells some information about this job. It tells me um, my efficiency, my scrap, how long it's going to take. It tells me how many different programs, so six programs. Okay. How many different formats, so two different formats, because I limited it to our standard sheet sizes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, total sheets used, it gives me my total weight, my scrap weight. Parts, so I had 10 parts, 10 uh, part names, but I have 54 place parts. That's because I had part one that had a quantity of 13, part two mm -hmm. had a quantity of two, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Yeah. Down here on the bottom left, it's going to show me some images, names of the parts, quantities, width, height, and weight. Just for a quick High double level. check on the shop floor, yeah. I guess, right? And, and if you scroll through, you can go to the next sheet. Let me mm -hmm. scroll down. And it's going to start showing me the nesting oh, okay. layout, right? Yep. So if the operator is like, hey, the first part came off, it's this one. I don't know what this part is. It's number one. He comes to the bottom. He says, oh, here's number one. This is the name of the part. Quantity, width, height, weight. And under optional data, we can put extra information. We can tell the, the operator machine, hey, when this part comes off, it has to go to a secondary operations of welding, or it has yeah. to go to a secondary operation of painting. Deburring or whatever. Deburring, yeah. whatever yeah. it might be. We have this ability to show them the way they understand when it runs, where it goes. Okay. okay. And this is all done in an automatic type of a way. 
you saw the amount of work I really had to put into it, right? <laughs> Which is not much. Which we won't tell much. anyone, though. Right, yeah. right. And, and even the very beginning portion where I, I selected the file, I drug it in, yeah. we don't even have to do that. Your ERP system can put an order into a share location somewhere on a network, Okay. and OPS is always going to be looking at that location. Ah, so so when, it, it in. Yep, when it sees the order, it pulls yeah. it in, automatically populates. We can also automate the nesting to where there's no more clicking, right? We can create timers inside of here that you can say, hey, I want my nesting to automatically start at 5 a.m., right? Oh, okay. So while everybody is home still sleeping, the nesting can start running, generate the nesting for me. That way when I come in the morning, my production is ready to run. Nobody has to babysit it. It's the, your nests are waiting for you. Yep, there's very minimal wow. babysitting. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I know it, I know it does very, a better job at creating a sheet than we do, of course, but the fact that you can, you don't even have to worry about when a job comes in, you have to do nothing. You. Yep, the bare minimum is what you have to do, and that's yeah. the goal, right? Yeah. Because um, programming is one of those things that um, it's necessary, yeah. but we, we want to spend our time doing other things and yeah. sitting behind the computer, clicking and clicking and adding and clicking. So if we can automate it as much as possible, that saves a lot of time to where then the programmer can go do more value added type of things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that was the, the goal of OPS. That's great, okay, good. Well, let's, um, let's stop this segment here and we'll, uh, we'll get on to the next one in a moment. Thank you.